Hey there. Welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 151. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today are the 6-inch G.I. Joe figures based on this movie, Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. So this movie was released in July of 2021 uh, in theaters, and it came out on DVD and Blu-ray yeah, in October, I believe. So before I get into talking about the figures, I guess I just want to quickly kind of share some thoughts on the movie. So here I am on my couch the next day editing the video and I realized that while I only intended to talk about the movie for a minute, I went on about a 20, 25 minute rant about the movie. I was just kind of silently raging. I was like, what are they doing? And then that rant led to a rant about the previous two G.I. Joe movies and it was just kind of there was no real structure to my thoughts. I was just like, bleh, bleh, this movie pissed me off. So I decided to actually cut all that out because it made the video too long, and I just wanted to focus on the toys. Not a great movie. The toys, spoiler alert, aren't great either in my opinion, but they're not bad. They're not as bad as this movie. So let's flip this around and take a look at the movie figures. So we might as well start with the hero of the movie, and I use that term loosely. This here is Snake Eyes. So you see here, he's wearing his iconic mask with a visor that appears in the film for about 10 seconds at the end of the movie. And even this suit here, like you see how this suit is kind of cool and tight with all this padding. It's pretty reminiscent of the outfit that he wore in Retaliation, which I thought was an awesome outfit. Even this, he doesn't wear uh, in the movie. Like, he gets the helmet at the end, and again, they show it in the trailer when he puts the helmet on, and then he gets on his motorcycle and drives off into the sunset. But uh, he's wearing a black outfit in the movie, but he doesn't get this armor until the same scene that he gets the helmet. So when you watch the trailer, it's kind of easy at a glance to think, oh, he's wearing a snake eye, so he's just not wearing his mask. But um, he's really not wearing any of it. He's wearing kind of a looser fitting kind of, uh, I don't know, a gi or whatever it is they wear. So, uh, yeah. So it's a cool design, but it's really a design for the toy and the marketing material only. You really don't get to see this outfit in action in the movie. And again, a lot like the retaliation line, they uh, use some different blacks. So he's not just, you know, solid one color from top to bottom. He's got some shinier blacks with some matte blacks that help break up the design. There's a little bit of other colors in here. You see he's got some silver on his belt. He's got the slightest amount of red here on the knee pads. But when you get up close there, you can see all the different textures. Like they're sculpting on all these pieces here. You know, you get lots of, lots of nice sculpted detail. So it's hard to see, uh, you know, at a distance because it looks like he's just a guy that's dressed in black from head to toe. But he's got all kinds of different components to this outfit. You know, the armor. You know, it's reminiscent, you know, to... I would, I'm just looking at the back here. kind of reminds me of the Pacific Rim armor that the guys wear when they're piloting their Jaegers. Now, as far as articulation goes on this figure, it's pretty good. Um, it's on par with what we've seen on most of the 6-inch G.I. Joe classified figures in that he's got, you'll see here, he's got double-jointed elbows so he can get a good range of motion on his arms. Pretty much reach back here and like touch his shoulder. He's got the double-jointed knees as well, so a good range of motion to be able to get his, his foot pretty far back. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into all the articulation because you should probably know by now, but, you know, he's got swivels here, he's got the ab crunch, uh, you know, head ball jointed, ball jointed arms, you know, lots of things. He's got the, uh, swivel and rocker ankles. I actually find his ankles are a little loose on my guy, which makes him hard to stand. When I have him standing up, he tends to want to, like, lean forward very easily. These joints have a little, I wish there was a little bit more of a ratchet to them. Um, let's talk about accessories. So he came with two of these blades, which have the black handle, the silver blade with this kind of black wash over them. It almost looks like there's some sort of like 
ancient carving or something in the blade of that knife. I'm not quite sure. It's hard to really make up the details of it. But he's got two of those. And so he can hold those on his hands. And I, does he have somewhere to store them? I don't know that he does. And then also he has his sword, which you just saw f fall off of him a second ago. So he has a hole on his back where he can store his sword. This loose piece, I'm sure it's removable if you pop his head off and stuff. So that kind of loose harness is removable. But there's a hole on the harness that lines up with the hole on his back. And then his sheath has a plug on it. So you can plug that right through the two of them. And so he's got this kind of gold paint on the sheath. So it looks nice, kind of breaks up the figure a little bit. And you can pull out the sword. And there he's got, I guess that's supposed to be his blade that they call morning light or whatever. So a silver blade with a little bit of gold paint on the top. So I do like this figure. Um, but in the intro where I said these figures aren't great, it's it's really because we just, you know, this line, the six inch G.I. Joe line, it's pretty new. And I've already got multiple Snake Eyes. And Snake Eyes being a character that even when he changes costume, it's all kind of relatively the same. The, you know, all black with the visor and stuff. So it just doesn't feel very fresh. And even this particular costume, even though I compared it a lot to the retaliation costume, which I like, I do find the head a little oddly shaped on this particular one. It seems a little jowly. Like, it's almost like the visor is pinched in and then his cheeks puff out a little bit underneath the visor. It's not major but it is just kind of an odd shape that I noticed, which I think brings it down a notch from the retaliation look. So now let's do a couple of comparisons. So first, maybe we'll compare it to other Snake Eyes movie figures. See what I'm talking about with his ankles here? He's, he wants to topple over. Yeah, come on. So when Rise of Cobra first came out, the first G.I. Joe movie, all we had was three and three quarter inch figures. So here is the Snake Eyes from that line. Now, this look was not great for Snake Eyes because he had that very distinct nose and mouth showing through the costume. So that's true to the movie design, but it's just a lot of fans didn't really like that look. You know, I myself wasn't a big fan of that look. Like the 1985 figure when Snake Eyes first got this visor, it actually did have a sculpted mouth and nose on it. It was just a little more subtle. Like this almost, you know, it doesn't even look like a mask almost. It just looks like he's got a, a black face. So yeah, I didn't really love that design. I think this figure, you know, portrays it okay, but it's just not a great look. Now here is the Retaliation Snake Eyes. And while I thought that costume was really great, I don't think this figure really does it justice. It's, it looks really lanky, and the detailed costume is kind of dumbed down. It's very simplified for this figure. Like, there is lots of little sculpted detail here, but it's still a lot simpler than what we actually saw on screen, and I don't think it's a great figure. But to give you a better idea of how good this costume design was, what I can bring out is I have the 12-inch uh, movie figure from Hot Toys. Now, these are higher-end collectibles. But when I bring this guy out here, I'm going to have to sit him down here maybe. But this is a good look at the Snake Eyes Retaliation costume. So you can see with this helmet, the multiple layers and the different shades of black have this like mesh. You can still see the, like the breathing slits kind of underneath the mesh, which is really cool. The different textures all throughout here, the buckles. Like this was just a really cool design. And... On the back here, you see all the different texture in his weapons, all this sort of stuff. So I think it, the look comes across much better in this larger version. I noticed his hand just fell off there. The hand, he has interchangeable hands. Just kind of plug onto these little pegs. But anyway, enough about retaliation, Snake Eyes. Let's move on. So the other comparison I'd like to do before we move on is to the other six-inch Snake Eyes figures. So this line has only been around for about a year and a half. And the first Snake Eyes figure I got was this one here. So this is a special edition version of the standard release. 
and it's just a recolored version so he's got the silver visor the silver buckles his pants are kind of a brown instead of black he's got the brown straps so a really detailed figure i really like the changes in color kind of bring out some of that detail and i think this visor looks much better like this is closer to the retaliation design as well like it's not like the 1985 version where he's got a visor and then a mouth and nose you know he's got that kind of these look like almost separate pieces like if he took this helmet off it would almost have to come off in like two or three different pieces i like that you can see little breathing uh slits there really cool look i like this one a lot and that figure they released it for the standard retail version it's the same it's just in all black with just a couple of silver buckles here and there and again i think it looks really sharp in the solid black and then we also got a little more recently is the commando snake eyes so this has got his original look without the visor based on the 1982 snake eyes with the goggles still still like a really cool look and you know kind of different from what we've seen there already so with all of these snake eyes is um this guy is probably the most underwhelming of the bunch just because i thought this was kind of a a cool design a new design but based on some of the best we've seen in previous designs this is cool to get a throwback to the commando look of 82 and this one here is just it doesn't really bring anything new to the table and like i said i don't really love the jowls the last thing i should mention about this one though is another accessory that it has is this unmasked head now we've never had a really unmasked snake eyes head before and that's because you know he's supposed to be a mysterious character and we don't really know what his face looks like in the early 2000s they did release a figure uh, whose name was just called classified and it was snake eyes before he became snake eyes um, but he had a hat on and even the shadows of the brim of the hat were painted to cover his eyes so you couldn't really see his face all that distinctly you know they tried to keep him in shadows but with this movie here they cast actor henry golding to play snake eyes he's featured you know without his mask on for the entirety of the movie so it makes sense that we would get this you know unmasked head sculpt because if you're a kid and you saw the movie and you actually liked it and you got this figure he might even be annoyed that he's got this masked head and where's the face that you saw throughout the whole movie so here we go and it's a really good likeness i like even like the, the the stubble it's hard to get all the detail there but the way the stubble is painted there the face printing looks really good I don't imagine I would display the snake eyes with his unmasked head, but who knows? Maybe just to kind of break up the monotony of these guys, maybe I will. So yeah, overall, not a bad figure, but uh, just not great. So next we're going to take a look at Storm Shadow. Now Storm Shadow is the, the white ninja, the counterpoint to snake eyes, in his black ninja garb, um, and it seems like pretty easy to do that. Should be a no-brainer. And yet this figure here just misses the mark for me. Like at a glance, you know, like it's a decently designed figure. Like the sculpt is, is not bad. He's got like the double jointed, you know, knees, elbows, good articulation throughout the swivel ankles, you know, swivel there at the, at the mid leg there, the ab crunch. So lots of good ninja poses available for this guy. But this as far as Storm Shadow designs go, this one just feels very uninspired, similar to the uh, the Snake Eyes design. Like, Storm Shadow, from his earliest appearance when the first figure came out in the 80s, he kind of set the tone for this is what Storm Shadow should look like. And while I don't have the original one handy, I have this kind of modern version of the original Storm Shadow, and this is what fans want like a pretty simple white ninja costume you know this is this is all we needed and when you see this guy this guy helps illustrate just how not white this figure is it's like a very weird kind of cream it looks like you know a storm shadow that maybe was in a house where somebody smoked for 30 years and it's just gone yellow like it's just kind of gross custardy looking ninja and i for the life of me i can't understand why they would do that like, how hard is it to do a white ninja? Like, I don't know if they thought, well, we've already seen Storm Shadow in a couple of movies with the white, so let's change it up. But there just seems to be no logic behind it, and I think it kind of ruins the whole figure. I think this would look a lot sharper if it was in a nice stark white. 
Instead, we get this weird cream ninja. So, and then even the design here, like he's got some sculpted detail. I don't know what these silver bands are. You know, I guess this is like maybe a random zipper. But you know, unlike Storm or unlike Snake Eyes, who at least had some different colors of black and some different types of paint, so there was matte black on shiny black. This guy almost looks like a prototype figure. Like there's no paint apps. Like look at these legs. You're telling me you couldn't have added a little bit of black for some of these details here, or this this white couldn't have been a different white than this. Like maybe if you had, you know, the under suit was white and then the armor pieces that overlay it were more cream or vice versa then it would have been okay but you know they just put no effort into painting this figure whatsoever so you see a little bit of sil silver paint throughout there he's got some flesh colored paint on his exposed fingers and then a little bit on the face now the face is nicely sculpted and nicely painted you see the scars there on his face it looks good now accessories Accessories are light with Storm Shadow, and they're they're light across the board with this line, which seems like another just weird choice. Like uh, I don't know why you would give these guys like maybe one gun, you know, two swords. Like they could have given them a lot more. So he's got two swords. They're pretty much the same, and they can be sheathed on the back there. His other accessory, like Snake Eyes, and by the way, his ankles are a little better than Snake Eyes. He stands a little bit better. So he has an unmasked head as well, which, like Snake Eyes, is a pretty good representation of the actor. It's well painted and well sculpted. And, you know, right now I'm choosing to display him like this, but I could see myself maybe swapping for this head because, uh, you know, I have gone on to watch some other things with this guy, and I, I like the actor quite a bit, so I don't mind having him up there on my shelf. So for comparison, if we look at previous movie storm shadows so in rise of cobra storm shadow well actually in both movies in rise of cobra and retaliation storm shadow did have a mask but he was largely unmasked in the movies and so there was multiple figures of storm shadow from both movies but this is probably my favorite one from rise of cobra and as you can see it is unmasked and uh yeah but he's still he's a white ninja much whiter than mm -hmm. this guy he's still got the dual swords but at least he comes with a holstered pistol. He's got a couple of sides there. So, you know, this little figure from, you know, more than 10 years ago had more accessories than this guy. And, you know, this guy was probably $9.99 where this guy is $29.99. So, yeah, this was a cool figure. Now, when it comes to retaliation, again, there were a few figures, but none of them really captured the look of the movie, which is kind of odd. Like, this is one of the retaliation storm shadows. And it almost looks like a sporty version of Storm Shadow. Just the way this kind of gray, it looks like he's wearing like Under Armour or something. I actually really like this design. It's one of my favorite Storm Shadow figures, but it does not represent what we saw on screen. And perhaps that's because Storm Shadow's look didn't really change all that much from the first movie to the second movie. And they kind of felt like they already covered that look with figures like this. Um, and since I dragged him out for my Snake Eyes review, I grabbed my Hot Toys version of Storm Shadow as well. So again, it's kind of hard to see the detail. There's just not enough room here on my table. But you can see here the really nice face sculpt, which really captures the actor. You know, the face sculpts in these things are amazing. Now, he actually did come with a masked head as well, but I've chosen to display him with his mask off. But again, there you can see the zipper that actually works, the real buckles. The different textures throughout the outfit. The swords that can be sheathed on the back there. He's got the size as well. Very cool figure. like this guy a lot. Now another thing that's annoying about this figure is where I said the snake eyes felt a little bit like we've been there, done that, and it didn't really give us anything new. It's because we already had a, at least two really good versions of the visored snake eyes look. But when I said people want this kind of classic iconic look for Storm Shadow. It's really weird that we haven't gotten this yet. Um, it's coming. They have announced um, that, you know, this, there's a figure coming out for pre-order in the six inch classified line that finally kind of looks like this. But after two years, it seems like a really long wait for such an important character. The only Storm Shadow we've got in the six inch line thus far 
is this Amazon exclusive, which is Arctic Storm Shadow. And this is based off of, I think it was the version three Storm Shadow back in the original vintage toy line. And it's a, you know, it's an okay look, but this is not the look most anybody would associate with Storm Shadow. I doubt it's anybody's first choice at a Storm Shadow costume, unless maybe this was the first figure you owned as a kid or something. But it's got too much black for Storm Shadow, in my opinion. So I was happy to get a version of Storm Shadow, and this is a cool figure, but it was diminished by the fact that this is the first one we got. Everybody, myself included, wanted a classic Storm Shadow, and they had a chance to kind of give us that with this movie figure, and instead we get this, you know, cream-colored, full butt. Like, he doesn't have the bare sleeves. He doesn't have the Arasha Kaji tattoo. Anything that would have brightened this figure up, it's just a very bland figure. So maybe they could even take this figure and repaint it. They could re-release this as a new, like, Red Ninja or something, and it might really work. But for Storm Shadow, I just find it rather boring. So next up, we're going to take a look at Scarlet. And like the previous two figures, like it's a well-constructed figure. It's, you know, on its own at face value, it's a nice figure. Like the face sculpt is nice. I think the paint on the face is nice. Like she's attractive. I think she's got a little too much color in her cheeks. It almost looks like she's wearing like blush or something, which... I find a little distracting. I think they could have done better just not including that. But like her chest armor here, this looks like it's weathered metal. I think that looks pretty good. You can see the different, uh, you know, different textures in here. Lots of little just sculpted details throughout. So a nice figure. Now it's pretty different from uh, Scarlet's traditional look, like her original look from 1982. Um, which is good. I don't think that 1982 look would, nece would necessarily, excuse me, would necessarily carry over onto the big screen in live action all that well. It wasn't really a great costume design. So I like that they've, uh, you know, kind of modernized it for this figure. Um, as far as the likeness goes, I think, I don't think this one's quite as good as the Snake Eyes and Storm Shadows as far as capturing the look of the actor. But it's by no means bad. Like, it's a, you know, it's a decent face sculpt for sure. Uh, for accessories, hers are very light. She comes with her crossbow. And that's it. Uh, there's, I don't think there was anything else as far as knives or pistols. If I am wrong about that, I apologize. But some of the, I've had these figures now for a while. And I'm just kind of getting around to reviewing them. So I don't think she had anything else, though. So, again, very light on the accessories. Now, Scarlet has appeared in live action before. She was in the first G.I. Joe movie, Rise of Cobra. Um, I thought she was okay in that, but again, not great. They changed her design quite a bit. And they released multiple figures of her from the movie. The only one I picked up was this one here. And that was basically just to say I picked up one version of Scarlet. I didn't like any of the movie versions. This is her in her kind of X-Men-like bodysuit which they all wore, all the Joes. So, uh, yeah, not a very inspired design. You know, they all look very generic, and I don't think the head sculpt is very good on this figure. So, you know, this one here, the new one, is definitely an improvement over the previous. Now, Scarlet did not appear in the second live-action movie. She was one of the Joes that I guess got killed off-screen. So, the main reason why this figure doesn't thrill me is because we got a really cool Scarlet figure in the six inch line already. And you can see here that they modernized her outfit from the classic 1982 look as well. So she's got this kind of breastplate armor, you know, with pants with the different textures and the knee pads. So this kind of like modern redesign with the hair and the ponytail, like I just feel like this one draws a little too much like, it's too close in design for that. Like, I kind of wish they maybe went a totally different direction. But this one just feels, like, almost unnecessary when I already have this one. And if you're thinking, well, they look different enough. It's true. But a lot of people, after the first wave of these figures were released, complained that they didn't like the colors. A lot of the Joes had a lot of gold on them, as you can see here. So they re-released the, uh, the Wave 1 figures with some more muted colors. So here is a new version of Scarlet. Um, so her hair is darker red, 
She's got a black undershirt instead of the purple undershirt of the first release. Instead of gold, she's got like brown. So it's much more subdued and a more like realistic uh, probably color scheme. And this is the one that I feel is pretty close to this one. Like it's obviously not exact, but other than the fact that this kind of captures the actress's likeness, it's a little different. It just, if this was just a standard Scarlet release and they, you know, gave her a new head sculpt on this body, I don't know if I would have bothered buying it if it was just another classified figure because I just don't think it's different enough. So not a bad figure, but uh, like the other ones, it's just a little, a uh, little bit more of the same. So yeah, what are you going to do? Now, I guess I should mention, uh, since I did talk about the male figures having the double jointed elbows, you can see here that she doesn't. She's just got a single jointed elbow. Uh, I think she still has a double jointed knees though. So that's just something to consider, I guess, if you care about that. That seems to be the case a lot of times that the female figures don't have quite the same articulation. I don't know if it's because maybe their arms are a little skinnier. And But anyway, otherwise, not a bad figure. So next up, we've got the movie Baroness. And I actually thought uh, the actress's portrayal of Baroness in the movie was quite good, even though she didn't have much to do. And I think this figure captures her look quite well, and I quite like it. So this is the first figure I got from the uh, movie line. And I actually got this figure before I got the uh, the standard release, Baroness. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to add a Baroness to my collection at all when I got this one. So you can see here she's got, uh, you know, the face painting on there and then she's got these glasses, which I don't believe are removable. I'm not going to try. There's a little bit of move. I'm sure you could get them off if you wanted to, but then I don't know if you'd be able to get them back on. So she doesn't have much paint apps either, which seems to be pretty consistent across the board with this line. But like Snake Eyes, you know, she really shouldn't. Baroness usually wears an all black like outfit like this. It's got some, you know, color where it needs to. She's got a red Cobra logo, which she's kind of always had. And you see, she's got some different textures too. So like this black is not quite the same as this black. This black is different from this black. So like Snake Eyes, she uses a lot of that uh, changing up between the matte blacks and the shiny blacks. So yeah, not a bad figure. And um, see for articulation, yeah, like Scarlet, she's just got the single elbows, but otherwise, she's got the same articulation you'd expect to see on any six inch figure. Good movement with the arms and the legs, all that sort of stuff. For accessories, she comes with this machine gun, and she also has two blades with the little cobra or snake head on the hilt there, and they can be tucked in on her belt. Um, I have seen some people complain about this figure having a long neck, and I guess I can kind of see that, but I really didn't think of that at all until somebody else pointed it out. Uh, I don't think it looks too bad. Probably having that uh, choker on there helps. Maybe if the choker was missing, it would seem like a longer neck, but uh, like, I don't know, realistically, if you look at where her chin sits compared to the height of her shoulders, is that too high? I don't know. Maybe. But it really doesn't bother me at all. I think it's a pretty good figure. Now, just for comparison. So, like Scarlet, Baroness was featured in the first G.I. Joe movie, Rise of Cobra. She was played by Sienna Miller. Here is a Baroness figure from that. Um, I don't think it's great. Like, it doesn't look like Sienna Miller. She's got the glasses. But just the face underneath there, it's... It's not an attractive face. I think she's got kind of like a wide chin and stuff. The head seems a little big on the skinny little body. I just, I was not a fan of this figure. And like Scarlet, she did not return for the sequel. So we did not get any retaliation figures of her. But we do have a six inch Baroness that came out. This was a Target exclusive, part of the Cobra Island line. And I love this figure. I think it's really great. They've taken the kind of classic Baroness look, but they've souped it up a little bit, made it a little bit more modern. So you see she's mostly black. She's got a little bit more red than this version because she's got multiple Cobra symbols. But instead of different shades of black, they've added some gray in here to break up the design. She's also got some gold on her accessories. Um, the glasses, I really like the clear lenses on those, the cat eye lenses with little gold points there. So yeah, really solid figure like this one a lot um but yeah again if, if i already had this figure which i think is great 
if they released this new version of Baroness, and again, not being based on a movie or anything, I would have probably picked this one up just for the change in the haircut and everything. I think it's different enough from this design that I, I think there's space for both of them in my collection. I actually probably think this is the most successful figure from the Snake Eyes line. And lastly, we have the only new character in the line. This is Akiko. So she was, what was her role? Like the bodyguard or security detail or something of the Arashikaji Ninja Clan. And uh, I'm pretty sure she was newly created for this movie. Now, again, I wouldn't absolutely swear by it. I'm, I'm pretty well versed in all my G.I. Joe lore. But uh, I suppose it's possible they pulled her out of an, a, co a comic book somewhere, but I don't believe so. I think she's brand new. And uh, regardless of whether she might have appeared in a comic book somewhere or not, she's definitely new to G.I. Joe toys. We've never had this character in toy form before. So that's kind of nice. So it's something fresh. And even though I think Baroness is maybe the most successful, and partly because Baroness is a character that I've grew up with and I love. So that's why I said I think she's maybe the best from the line. Really, I think Akiko is probably the one that's maybe most exciting. And if that movie had done better and they made sequels, this character might have gone on to do bigger and better things and become a fan favorite. I don't think we'll ever see this character again because I doubt they'll make sequels to the movie. And I don't feel she had... I don't feel she made big enough of an impact in the movie for me to really care about her that much going forward if she's just kind of a one-and-done character. Maybe if say, Larry Hama decides to take this character from the movie and integrate her into the comic books into a cool character, then, again, I would maybe appreciate this figure even more. But for now, she seems like a character that we're probably never going to see again. So it's nice to add new faces to the toy shelf rather than just get more of the same, more Snake Eyes, more Storm Shadows. It's just I didn't care enough about this character. Same as I mentioned earlier, if they did choose to make a Wave 2 for this movie, which I'm sure they won't, most of the other new characters they introduced, they just weren't that exciting as far as their design and stuff to really warrant a figure anyway. And with Akiko here, I feel her design is, uh, is pretty plain too. Like she doesn't bring a whole lot to the table. Maybe if she had a cool removable mask or something like that. But otherwise, like it's a, it's a nice figure of just kind of a standard, I don't know, Japanese girl. So anyway, like as far as the design goes, the, there's lots of uh, kind of sculpted detail here, but again, the paint apps are few and far between. So you see the texture in the pants, you know, boots. It's a different color black. She's got a high heel, but it's filled in to help her stand. She's still a little, uh, she still topples a little bit because, you know, you can see how thin the back half of her foot is. Um, but yeah, the paint apps are pretty light. She's just got this black and then this kind of cream colored, but even this cream, I think it's whiter than what we saw on Storm Shadow. If I bring Storm Shadow back out here. Yeah, like I think it's it's similar, but I think it looks better on her. Um, articulation, same as we've seen everybody else. She's got uh, single jointed elbows like the other female figures, but otherwise double jointed knees and all the other standard articulation. Ball jointed head, so a good range of motion there. And the face sculpt is really nice. I think this really captures the look of the actress. Again, I feel that they've got a little bit of rosy paint on her cheeks, which I don't love. It's not as bad as on Scarlet, but I think the figure would have been better without it. But otherwise, I think it really captures the look of the actress. Accessories, she's got a couple of bladed weapons. So she's got this one here you see. I've got her with a long spear where there's a blade on both ends. Then I've also got her with this weapon here. And you see it's got a long blade and then a little nub here. And oops, she came with two of those. So this one here, it's pretty much identical. And I wonder if it's supposed to be that she has the two single ones and then they snap together and then she has the longer spear because that's kind of what it looks like. But what I find odd about it, unless I'm missing something, is these don't appear to connect. Like you'd think one would be an innie and one would be an outie, but no, they just kind of... So I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just say make this spear split in two and then they could have just given her this one accessory. She could hold it as two single blades or as one spear she wanted to. It does seem kind of odd to give us the two single spears, the one long spear, when it clearly looks like these two are supposed to snap together into that other weapon. Like, I don't know why they didn't just give us this and maybe a couple size or something a little different. So anyway, she doesn't have room to store this anywhere. So this one's just going to end up in the spare parts bin. 
and otherwise I'll just be displaying her like this. So anyway, I don't have a whole lot more to say about Akiko, a pretty cool figure, but for you know a character that I don't really know a whole lot about and don't really care a whole lot about, but it looks nice. Anyway, so that is my review of the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins figures from Hasbro. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please make sure to hit the like and the subscribe buttons below. Um, and please leave me comments. You know, feel free to comment on the toys, but also feel free to comment on the movie. Um, I've seen plenty of comments and stuff online that a lot of people really did not enjoy this movie, but some did. And, uh, you know, I kind of hated it at first, but I've kind of backpedaled a little bit now and it's, it's okay, but <laughs> it's not great. So yeah, where do you, where do you land on the spectrum? What did you think of the movie? So yeah, feel free to chime in below. I'm interested in your opinions. So uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to do another GI Joe video soon. Probably my next video will be another uh, GI Joe, GI Joe video. Because I have quite a few of the G.I. Joe classified figures that I haven't got around to reviewing. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably tackle that next. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to come back for that. Until then, ciao!